and uh, got to talk to him about the Quakers this upcoming season because they're, su- they're sure to be fun. Coach, how we doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, No problem, Coach. I mean, you got to be feeling good. Weather's going up and down, but season's coming right around the corner. What we like to do with all our area coaches, we like to just start off with a sort of meet the team segment and uh, highlight what you're returning this year and some of the new faces you're excited to uh, bring to Salem baseball. Yeah, well, we're returning a lot um, from last year's team. We did lose three seniors um, as part of that great team that we had last year. But we're returning uh, um, Gavin Wilms who will and uh, Carson Rhodes, who will be our league pitchers um, this year. We're returning senior Darius Beck, uh, cat- catcher for us, leader for us, uh, senior Brock Young, junior Jackson Johnson. Those two were uh, – or Jackson Johnson was all-league player last year. Um, we are returning, um, Hunter Carlisle, senior Corey Risen, senior, uh, Caden Burt, who's going to be big for us this year, senior. So we, uh, I think we have eight seniors returning and then a couple, uh, underclassmen that were pieces to that, uh, puzzle last year. And then we got some new faces stepping up this year, uh, Lance Bailey, sophomore, who's going to try and step in and fill, uh, Nick Coletta's shoes at second base. And um, Donnie Ash, who was he played the field for us last year, and his his role is going to be expanded this year as a junior outfielder. And uh, uh, Kyle Burt, Caden Burt's uh, younger brother, we're excited about him as a, a sophomore. So we have some we have some young talent that um, is going to need to gain some experience, but we return a whole lot of experience too. Coach, I know with uh, all the talent that you guys have, you got to put together a really good schedule to get you guys ready for the tournament time. Uh, talk about some of the teams that pop up. Obviously, the EBC is going to be strong. Talk about that conference as well, but also some teams out of conference that pop up on your schedule that you think will really prepare you for postseason. Yeah, like you said, the EBC is tough. Um you know, it's a grind getting through the EBC, but we, you know, we started off, I don't know if we can start it off much more difficult than um, this Saturday at home against Canfield. Uh, um, you know, there's not much to say about that. Our guys are, are looking forward to that. I'm sure their guys are too. It's a, you know, I don't know how many times you can start the season off with a rematch of a regional semifinal game uh, where both teams return so much. So that's a big one. Um, South range is, is always a good comp always good competition for us. We got Howland, um, but that, that EBC uh, schedule is a grind for sure. So we're looking forward to the out of conference games. We're looking forward to starting off with a huge challenge for us. Uh, But the EBC is where our focus uh, is. Speaking of schedules, I I saw coach Niddle on here a couple weeks ago. That might be the dumbest schedule I've ever seen. They, they, uh, they have a, I would love to have that schedule, man. They, they, they uh, play everybody that is any good in the area. So I'm looking forward to seeing them go through that schedule. Um, But ours is certainly a challenge for us as well. Coach, to kind of gauge where the expectation level is of this team and what you have, uh, what are some goals that you have for this team? Obviously you guys went far and I mean, I got to figure expectation should be around that point again. So where do you, uh, where do you fit the expectations and goals of this season at? Yeah. That's a, it's a, it's a big thing for us. We have to manage expectations for sure. It's a, it's a totally different um, feeling this year going in with uh, uh, the expectations that other people have for us, that we have for ourselves that maybe we didn't, or maybe they didn't last year. So we have to manage the expectations. My goal is very simple as it was last year is to get us to play the absolute best baseball that we can play somehow uh, and it, we have a long way to go. I will tell you that. We had a scrimmage yesterday against Columbiana, and uh, we did some good things. But it was the first time, really, that this team has been together on a baseball field playing a baseball game. We, You know, we've been practicing, obviously, but uh, we got a long way to go. So expectations, um, I'm sure other people have high expectations as far as what we're going to do record-wise or uh, the league. But my expectation is somehow – get these 13 to 15 guys to play the best that they can. Because if we do that, we're very talented um, at all these other goals that other people might have for us, or that maybe our guys have for ourselves as far as league titles and district titles and all that kind of thing. That'll take care of itself, but we got to play the best baseball that we can. And uh, we have, we sure have a long way to go to get there. 
Coach, uh, kind of a follow-up to that because now you're kind of not the team that's going to sneak up on anybody anymore. I mean, the first game of the year, you're playing the team that you kind of ended their season. You're going to have the target on your back uh, all year because of the success you had last year. How do you think the team's going to respond to kind of being the favorite every time they walk on the floor, on the on the field? And every time you know they kind of do, the other team's going to be saying, that's the Salem team that we really want to beat. Yeah, we got to figure that out. We have to figure it out because you're absolutely right. We're not sneaking up on anybody. Uh, people have a, Some people have us circled on their schedule. Uh, I'm sure Canfield does. Listen, we got Canfield circled on our schedule as well. That's a big game for us to see where we're at. But you're right. We, we, uh, we have the target on our back, and we have to figure it, figure it out. Um, and it's going to take some time. I told these guys yesterday, like, a lot of these guys that we return, you know, we played last year and did some good things, but this is a brand new team. It's a brand new year. You have to figure out how to play together. Um, we lost some pieces that helped us play together last year. So we got to figure it out. And, uh, you know, I have no doubt that we will with uh, our, our kids. I love our kids. I love their mentality. I love their attitudes. We'll figure it out. But there will be some rough spots for sure, no doubt. Talking about this team culture wise coach and the the culture that you've uh, you've implemented here at Salem uh, what would you say or what would you hope that the boys that go through your program would say about what it means to be a Quaker well it's definitely changed over the years for sure you know when I took over uh, very young very inexperienced as, as a head coach obviously uh, and we kind of had to figure it out on the fly but um, I think what these guys and the, the guys that came before them have helped to establish is a team that works really hard, cares about each other, plays for each other, uh, and, you know, ha enjoys the process, right? We talked about that the other day as well. Like, you got to enjoy the process. Some of our guys want to start out, you know, in the district title game right now, you know, like, but you got to enjoy the process. And uh, I enjoy being around our guys all the time. So I would say that it's, hard work, doing the right things, but also enjoying each other, enjoying the process, enjoying playing with each other and for each other. Uh, it's been a long, it's been a long road to get to where it's at. And we have got there in large part to the people who came before, especially last year, those seniors uh, were a big reason why we turned this program around and are looking to um, keep it heading in the right direction. You know, and you keep coming back to coaching baseball. What is it about this sport? Talk about your baseball journey and, and what makes you kind of love it so much that you keep coming back to it. Yeah, baseball was is uh, it's been a huge part of my life. I don't think I'd be the same person I am today without baseball. Um, and I know I'm going to get some eyes rolling from a couple people here when I bring up that 1999 team because they're sick of hearing me talk about it. But that really changed my life, being a part of the 1999 Salem Quakers uh, the first district title here in school history set the record for most wins, which both of those records were beaten uh, last year by that team. But being part of that group um, changed my life. And, uh, you know, just like I said, I hope that the program is about being there for each other and enjoying the process. I, I, I think about that team often because of what we accomplished and how we accomplished it together and i talked to you know 80 90 percent of that team on a routine basis so uh the relationships that you build in the game is huge um and and things that could last for a, a whole lifetime and you know i hope our guys know that and uh we try and cultivate that here in salem we try and allow them time to you know maybe it's just not about baseball but maybe it's about the experiences and the relationships uh between the the guys and the locker room is a big part of that we you know we love being in our locker room because you know some good things happen in there and we're taking a trip to myrtle beach as some of the other programs in the area are doing this year to try and cultivate that the, those relationships and hopefully build uh lifelong relationships so yeah base, so i played at salem did not pursue baseball uh in college i'm not sure that i was good enough to play in college um but it has, it has been a huge part of uh, my life for sure. Coach, I mean, you've been through the grind as both a player and a coach. You've tasted success as both a player and a coach. So take a step back for a second and go back and coach yourself. What would Coach DeBar tell player Michael DeBar then? <laughs> your chance? Oh, my gosh. He'd probably say, uh, you know, don't worry about 
talking to the other team as much because that and I think, uh, you know, some of these guys I see myself in on our team, um, you know, it's hard to it's this is a fine line that our guys walk that we walk here is we have confidence. Our guys have a lot of confidence. They do not lack confidence. But, uh, you know, you got to be respectful of the other guys as well. So um, we like to chirp in the in the dugout. And I, I don't want to take that away from our, our guys at all because I think it's who we are. But we also, you know, want to um, respect the game of baseball. So I think Coach Mike DeBar would tell player Mike DeBar, focus on the game uh, a little bit um, and, and respect the other, other team. And that's a, that's a tough thing for our guys sometimes. But, um, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing. I have no problem talking about our guys talking I, um, as long as it's in – good nature you know what i mean uh college baseball i love watching college baseball because so much of it is uh the passion that those guys have and sometimes it spills over from dugout talk but um you know that's passionate you're being passionate about the sport you want to win um but you know i i never want our guys to like uh you know talk bad about the other team but just be confident about ourselves if that makes any sense. Heckling part of the sport, coach. Yeah. And I, I think I think we both we both get that too. As long as you stay within, like you said, there's parameters Correct. to stay within, and uh, when you're when you're heckling, but I think it's with uh, within the lines of the sport. I think it's a huge part of it as well. I think coach. coaches can skirt around that sometimes, and yeah. they don't want to talk about that. But let, like you said, it's part of the game. It's part of the culture of this game. Pretend like we're not dealing with 15 to 18 year old kids, you know, <laughs> like. Right. Um, coach, we want to give you the chance to highlight your coaching staff as well. We know you have a great assistance um, and we want to give them highlights. We want to let them know that they, they matter. So uh, shout out your assistance and what they mean to the program. Yeah. So uh, coach uh, uh, Jake Carner is our um, uh, junior varsity head coach. Uh, he's been with us. This is his fourth year going into his fourth year. Now he's so great for the developmental uh, side of, of our program. He, he's a, a catcher. He's a former catcher, uh, which is huge to have those guys on your staff. And he's great for our, our young guys developing. And Coach Ryan Powell, um, both of these guys, Carner and Powell, coach football as well. Um, he's the assistant JV coach. And I couldn't ask for two better guys for the uh, JV level. They get the JV guys know, listen, it's about playing baseball at the junior varsity level. I know a lot of times we get wrapped up in wins and losses but it's about getting better at baseball and, and coach Carner and coach Powell do a great job with those guys there and then coach Ricky Enlo um, is an assistant varsity coach for us he, he's a recent graduate real recent uh, he was one of those seniors that lost his senior year to COVID uh, and he was back with us last year coaching and he's been great with the guys and then coach Clutter I mean I don't know what to say about coach Clutter assistant varsity coach he runs our social media I don't know if you guys have uh, checked that out, but uh, our social media game is uh, unlike any other um, with some of the things that he does for for that. And uh, fundraisers, he's huge at um, organizing and running uh, fundraisers, which is a big part of high school baseball. Unfortunately, you know, we don't want to spend time on that, but you have to do it. And he does a great job with that. And then obviously with managing the game, he's great. Uh, In-game management, Coach Clutter is great. And he works with uh, our infielders, um he, he's great so i i can't i couldn't ask for a better staff i love our staff i love what we're doing uh, like i said we got a lot of work to do and i have no doubt that these guys are going to help get it done coach i just want to give you the chance to call out the salem community for game number one shout out your opening day and uh what time it is and where to be for the quakers listen it's gonna be cold pretty... saturday would you say that again i said i think it's a pretty big one i it's a big one for sure, and I know uh, DJ wanted me to turn it into a night game, and it that would be a that'd be a cold one there at Ray Reesbeck <laughs> Field. But we're at one o'clock Saturday at Ray Reesbeck Field at the uh, Salem High School. It's going to be about forty-two degrees, but uh, that's uh, spring baseball in Ohio. So I, I would urge if you want to see good baseball, even if you're not a uh, Salem or a Canfield guy, come to Ray Reesbeck Field Saturday. You're going to see some of the best baseball players in the area on one field. Uh, it's going to have an all-star game look from the talent that's on that field. I mean, and, I know Canfield is absolutely loaded, and uh, we think we have some pretty good baseball players ourselves, and I can't wait to see Coach Niddle and the guys 
uh, come to the Ray and, uh, you know, get this thing started here in 2022. Great word usage because you can go from that game to YSN's All Star game at South Range that very evening. So there you go. There you go. So I mean, make a beeline right from right from Salem to South Range because I mean, you're gonna get an All Star yeah. feel for baseball, and then you get the basketball side of things. It's hey, a great. I think DJ is pretty happy now that that game's a, a, a day game. Okay, we'll keep it a day game next <laughs> week. We look forward to that one for sure, Coach. We're going to wish you the best of luck in that one. I'm sure all of our eyes will be glued to that one if we can't make it in attendance. And uh, good luck on the season, and I know we'll be talking to you again real soon. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys having me. Go Quakes. <laughs> appreciate you too, Coach.